You may know of the sutta where the Buddha talks about how helping yourself, you're helping others. In other words, by sticking with the practice of developing your mindfulness, you're developing good qualities in mind, and other people will benefit from that. The Buddha gives the image of two acrobats, one acrobat standing on the shoulders of the other one. They've climbed up to the top of a bamboo pole, standing on the tip of the pole. And the one below says, Okay, you look out after me, and I'll look out after you, and that way we'll come down safely from the pole after we've shown our tricks. And the acrobat on top says, No, that won't work. You look out after yourself, and I'll look out after myself. And that way we'll help each other maintain our balance, we'll be able to come down safely. In other words, if you're concerned about the other person's balance all the time, you're going to lose your own. But if you look after your balance, you help the other person maintain his or her balance, too. The image is so vivid that you tend to forget there's another side to that sutta as well, when the Buddha says, if you help others, you're helping yourself. He doesn't give an image, but basically he lists four qualities to develop in your dealings with other people. Be good for them, and it'll be good for you, too. The qualities are goodwill, sympathy, which can also be translated as kindness. The Pali word is anukampa, patience or endurance, and equanimity. If you can develop these qualities in your relationships with other people, then you benefit. In all cases, these are qualities you have to develop when you're being irritated by other people, or you're angry at them. You've got to hold that irritation and anger under control, because all too often we feel that when other people are misbehaving, it gives us license to misbehave. And we're afraid that if we let them, quote-unquote, walk all over us. They'll get used to treating us like a doormat, so we have to show that we're not doormats. There's a passage in the canon where one of the asuras basically says, if people see that you're not fighting back when they mistreat you, then they'll think that you're weak and they mistreat you even more. And Saka, the king of the devas, replies, no, they how they see you is not the issue. It's what your behavior is, because that becomes your karma. And then if other people misbehave and you simply misbehave in response, then that misbehavior becomes yours. And if they think you're weak, then they know nothing of the drama. Because you have to remember that qualities like goodwill and patience and equanimity and kindness are forms of strength. There's that story where Lady Wadehika is famous for being kind and generous and mild-mannered, and she has a slave woman. And the slave woman starts wondering, why does she have this good reputation? Is it because she really is that kind of person, or is it because I'm neat in my work? So she starts getting up later and later and later in the morning every day, and every day Lady Wadehika gets more and more angry. And finally takes a rolling pin and beats her over the head. And the slave woman goes out and shows off the handiwork of Lady Wadehika, the kind, mild-mannered Lady Wadehika. The point is that if you're good only when people are good to you, that doesn't really count as much. It's when you behave with equanimity and patience and goodwill when other people are mistreating you. That's when you show your strength. It's that same sutra where the Buddha talks about having goodwill as solid and large as the earth, or as large and as cool as the river Ganges. In other words, you have to think of your goodwill as being large. And that goodwill and kindness are not weaknesses. So many people make that mistake, thinking that 
when you show goodwill to others and you're kind to others, it's because you're weak and you have to, out of fear of their misbehavior. But you have to look at it another way. You develop these qualities as strengths, and they become your good qualities from that point on. And you learn how to control your anger, and the ability to control your anger is really important. It's a skill you want to master. Because we can harm ourselves so much by the way we express our anger, give into it. So think of goodwill and kindness. And the two things are different. Goodwill is wishing for happiness for everybody. Kindness is when you go out of your way to be gentle. You sympathize. That's why the, that word anukampa can be translated both as kindness and sympathy. You sympathize with the fact that Everybody else is suffering. You're not the only one suffering. Everyone else is suffering. And the best way to respond to somebody that you have difficulties with is trying to be kind to them. And whether they respond properly or not, that's not the issue. It's simply the fact that you've learned to spread your mind out so you're not thinking about just your own sufferings in life. You start thinking about the fact that everybody else is suffering. In mindfulness practice, this is called focusing on your topic. In this case, it would be mind states both internally and externally. It's not that you can be aware of other people's mind states, but you can infer from your own. You've got this body. You, living as a human being in a society, there's going to be suffering. Other people have bodies, they have the same problems. Their sufferings may be different in their details, but the basic principle is the same. We're all suffering. And so nobody gains anything by piling more suffering on other people. And notice that goodwill and patience go together. The word for patience in, in Pali is the same as the word for earth. So that connection with saying that goodwill is like the earth. For someone who knew Pali, that would automatically lead to the connection with goodwill is a form of patience. The more you're able to endure other people's misbehavior, the more goodwill you can have. And the more you have goodwill for them, the more you are willing to forgive them for their misbehavior. So it makes it easier to be patient. Now, whether they respond properly or not, again, that's not the issue. That's where equanimity comes in. We can't control the behavior of the people. The best we can do is to make a, ourselves a good, good example in hopes that they'll pick it up at some point. And even if they don't, well, we earn the good karma of having done what's right. Remember, all the Buddhist teachings come down to this dichotomy of what should and should not be done. The Buddha is not forcing his shoulds on you. After all, they are conditional. If you want to put an end to suffering, then this is it what he recommends that you do. And his recommendation comes from a lot of experience on his part. But he's not telling you you have to do these things, but it's in your best interest to do them. And so when difficult situations come up, ask yourself, well, what really should be done here? And give the Buddha's recommendations a try. We live in a society where people feel that if someone misbehaves, that becomes their just justification for a misbehavior back, and they just go spiraling down, as we've seen too often all around us. And yet the society doesn't take seriously the idea that maybe by some restraint and some equanimity, a lot of these problems could be solved. Or the idea that your behavior is your most precious possession. And 
Sometimes you don't want other people's behavior to pull you down. Why do you have to go down to their level? We've got to keep learning how to repeat these values in your head and in your heart so they become real, not just words in some book from India. Because even though 2,500 years have passed since the Buddha had passed away, human nature is pretty much the same. And our predicament, the suffering we cause ourselves, is the same. And the way out is the same. And if you give those ideas a fair hearing and a fair try, you find that you benefit and the people around you benefit too. So the benefits work, work both ways. When you focus on your practice of mindfulness, you benefit directly. And other people benefit too. When you focus on developing these qualities, they may be the immediate recipients of the benefit, but you also benefit in the long run. <laughs>